So now that we can evaluate a base raised to a power, we want to start looking at combinations. What if I'm multiplying some bases together? Which ones can I combine? Which ones can't I? And what are some shortcuts um, to get us there? So these first two examples, we're going to write them out. What does each of them mean? So my base in this first term is A. That times itself three times in total. So A times A times A. That's coming from the first. And from the second one, we're multiplying by a times a. So if we're going to write that shorthand, first of all, do the parentheses matter on multiplication? Doesn't matter. Associative law tells us we can take all those away. So how many factors of a do we have altogether? Five of them. Similar story for the second one. Again, first term is saying b times itself four times. Second term, b times itself, 3. Associative law tells us we can get rid of the parentheses. Got the same base everywhere. And how many factors all together? 4, 5, 6, 7 of them. Okay. So, what do you think? If I've got the same base and multiplication everywhere, what do I do with those exponents? In each case, I sum the two, that gives me my end result. Sum the two gives me my end result. So that's our product rule. Any number and the positive integers m and n. So positive exponents, we'll deal with the negatives later. So any base a, positive exponents, if they're the same base and they're being multiplied, we add the exponents together. So instead of having to write out the equivalency every single time, we can jump and do it shorthand. But if you forget all these rules, you can always come back to this. It'll work. We can write out um, explicitly what it means, count the number of factors, and get there. So here, first example. Same base being multiplied. So how many factors of 5 do I have all together? I've got 8 of them that are being multiplied. We add those together. I guess we could show that in between step. 6 plus 2. 5 to the 8th. For part B, now we have three chunks, but again, it's all the same base, dealing with m, so we add all of these exponents. This is going to be m to the 5 plus 10 plus 3. So, looking at m to the 18th. For part C, what is my power on that first term? What is the power on x right now? Unspoken, 1. Anything raised to 1 is itself. So, how many factors do we have here? Got 9 all together. Okay. Now, the parentheses of this next example. If I look at these as bases themselves, just based on the grouping, are they the same base? Do they match exactly? No. The a to the thirds do, but b squared and b fifth do not match. So how else could we kind of break that up and rewrite our terms? Multiplication is commutative and associative. So we can get rid of the parentheses, switch the order around. So all together, how many factors of A do I have? 3 plus 3 gives me 6. And B, how many factors of B do I have? 5 plus 2, 7. And again, if you weren't sure, write out every single multiplication like we did in the beginning. Count the number of terms. And in this example, again, the parentheses should first indicate, look at these bases, are they the same? If they are, work with it. If they're not, split it up. So in this case, do our bases match exactly? Yes. So the base that we're dealing with is 4y. And how many factors of that do I have? 6 over there, 3 on the right. So I've got 4y raised to the ninth. All right, so take those next four. Write them um, succinctly with one, one representation. So what are you looking at in the first? Same base, 3, being multiplied. So we add those exponents together. All together, we've got 10 of them. For the second one, again, same base. It's being multiplied. So we've got 10 factors there. Third one, all dealing with p. If we add those together, I'm looking at 24 factors of p. That would take a while to write out, so that's why it's helpful to get 
comfortable with this. And in the last example, we have groupings. Are the bases exactly the same? No. So we have to split it up into A's and B's. And how many factors of A do I have? Got seven, eight, nine, since everything is being multiplied. And B, how many factors do I have? Five, six, seven, eight of them. All right. So that'll save us some time dealing with the product rule. Instead of having to write out P times P times P times P times B times C 12 times times 8 times gives us 24 altogether. So get comfortable with these rules. They're going to save you a lot of time.